guys. Today we're going to be learning about the audio settings in FL Studio. More specifically, how to configure your ASIO settings. So let's get started. So first, to bring up your FL Studio audio settings, click on Options and then Audio Settings. Alternatively, you can bring up the Settings panel by simply pressing F10 and then clicking on the Audio tab, found here. First, we have the Device section. Here we can either select an audio interface to handle the inputs and outputs directly, or use driver software to control the interface inputs and outputs. If you click on the device, a drop-down menu will appear, which lists all of the input and output audio devices connected to your computer. As you can see, I have a few different options here. The two main categories of interface are direct sound devices and ASIO devices. So when you use a direct sound device, it means that the input and output samples are processed through the default sound card you have in your computer. In my case, it's a Realtek sound card. Because this is your computer's default device, as it's wired to your motherboard, the latency is usually very low when using a device that is routed through the direct sound. This is because using direct sound means that while FL is open, the inputs and outputs cannot be used for any other program, so the buffer rate is quite low. That is why there is a button here labelled Auto Close. If you're using a direct sound device, make sure this option is selected so that you can hear other applications when you minimise FL Studio. So as you can see, I don't use direct sound devices, for a few reasons that I will outline shortly. The second category of devices is ASIO devices. Whenever you install a new driver software for your audio interface, if it is supported by ASIO, which every major brand of interface will be, then ASIO will create a profile for it so you can control the interface via ASIO. So ASIO is openware which means that when a brand like Focusrite, Alesis or Akai create an interface, they can use the open source software to make their driver compatible with ASIO, which is why it supports more or less every interface. It works in the same way as NVIDIA with graphics cards. ASIO driver software allows you to have multiple audio devices active at the same time and use them simultaneously, something you can't do with direct sound devices. Anyway, every FL Studio comes with its own version of ASIO, which includes ASIO DirectX Full Duplex and ASIO for All. It also usually includes a low latency version of ASIO, which is a simplified version of DirectX Full Duplex. That offers a lower latency by only allowing you to select one input and output device at any one time. The DirectX Full Duplex device allows you to view all of your available inputs and outputs across all of your interfaces and sound cards, which are currently connected to your computer. This device has a significantly higher latency than others because what it attempts to do is lock in the buffer length at 2048 samples in order to guarantee a recording with no artifacts, or pops and clicks as you might call them. This buffer length cannot be changed, which is one of the reasons that I don't use this device. Instead, I use ASIO for all, specifically version 2.11 beta. There are much newer versions of this, which you will get with every new version of FL Studio that comes out. On installation, you can choose to install the updated ASIO or use a version that is currently on your system. I use version 2.11 that came with my FL Studio 11 because I'm currently still running Windows 7, which the new ASIO version doesn't seem to like. So when trying to use the new version of ASIO, which came with my FL 20, I was getting hardware crashes left and right which always resulted in a blue screen of death. I just thought I'd mention that in case anyone else comes across this issue. The way to fix that is use an older version of ASIO. Anyway, I would recommend using ASIO for all for a couple of reasons. Firstly, you have full control over the buffer length using this device. Now at this point, if you don't know what buffer length is, it's as simple as this. A lower buffer length means that your live monitoring of the recording signal will get to your DAW and headphones or speakers quickly. However, the amount of data that can be processed at once is reduced because you're trying to push the samples through your processor more quickly. This means that with super low buffer lengths, you won't be able to record very high quality audio or record whilst playing back a very populated playlist without your processor shitting the bird. The opposite applies vice versa. With longer buffer lengths, your latency will be extended meaning that the audio will take longer to get from your microphone to your headphones, measured in milliseconds. Longer buffer lengths, however, do mean that you can record higher quality audio whilst monitoring your playlist without your processor screaming at you. 
So ultimately, buffer length is the amount of time that you allow your processor to handle the input samples, so is directly proportionate to latency. Every processor is different, so they all have their own sweet spots in terms of balance between higher buffer lengths and lower latency. Of course, you should always adjust the buffer length to suit your current recording or playback needs. So the second reason I use ASIO for All over other device controllers is because it has latency compensation. Latency compensation works differently than you might think. Most people assume that latency compensation means that the input samples are nudged a certain amount of samples left, as it were, so that it appears to be recording with zero latency. Actually what it does is delay the playback of the playlist by a certain amount of samples so the recorded audio will sit in sync with the rest of the project when the recording is complete. My processor is quite good, so I don't really need latency compensation often. If your latency is below 50 milliseconds and you aren't getting any glitches, then you're fine. However, if you're running an audio heavy project on FL and your processor does start to struggle whilst recording, I found this tool quite useful to make sure that the recording is aligned to the project. So there's a few other options with ASIO for All. Aside from being able to activate and deactivate all of your devices in this panel, you can also, for example, modify the buffering process. Without going into too much detail, buffers are temporary caches of data that are stored in the memory whilst being moved from one place to another. In other words, the audio is converted to samples via the A to D converter, then sent to your processor to count and manifest the samples into a digital waveform, which we eventually see as our recording. After the samples have been logged and left the processor, they are stored in what's called a buffer in a temporary cache until the controlling application, in this case Fruity Loops, decides what to do with it. By that I mean FL decides, based on your insert or send chains, whether it needs to send the samples through processors first before it's recorded to either Edison or your playlist. As you can imagine, the more audio processors you send the audio through before it records to the disk in FL will mean that the buffer length will be longer, which results in monitoring latency. For that reason, you can modify the buffer offset to decrease the latency. The next option available is resampling. What it does is resample any audio in your playlist that has been imported at a non-industry standard sample rate, like 56 kHz for example. It will round the sample rate of the audio up or down depending on whether the original sample rate is closer to 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz. This of course is purely for playback optimization, as you can't have audio clips with different sample rates in the same project. Why is that you ask? It's because your computer measures your time code in samples. So if 44.1 kHz equals one second, then a 48 kHz sample in the same project will play as if it was slowed down, as you can imagine. If you're struggling to understand the rules and concepts for sample rates, have a look at my sample rate and bit depth tutorial. That should help. So forcing WDM driver to 16-bit is an option that nobody would need these days. This is designed for antiquated computers with older operating systems to attempt to compensate for the lack of fidelity in the amplitude during the conversion from analog to digital. If you find you need to use this option, your primary objective should not be forcing your WDM driver to 16-bit it should be getting a new computer. So the final option available is to reset all settings. This resets all of your device's audio settings like buffer size and latency compensation back to their original optimized state. You only really need to use this if you've adjusted some settings and it isn't working out but you can't remember what the original states were. So that's how ASIO works. The rest of the options in the audio settings panel are quite simple. But if you're unsure, FL will outline what each control does if you hover over it, like such. In the second part of this series, I will explain the rest of these audio settings, including an explanation of playback tracking and what interpolation is. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this has helped. Until next time. <laughs>